little bar that I mentioned this uh, this morning. I want to go over that a little bit so that you really understand what's happened. So we won't talk about the thermal bar for a minute, but thermal stratification. When the lake warms, there's warm water and then getting cooler water and then cold water. That's thermal stratification. But the way it begins is that the really shallow water warms up first, and then the water outside of that, and then the water outside of that. And so this warm comes out from the shore towards the center of the lake. Meanwhile, it's coming from the other side too. And eventually the most two pieces meet, and we have a thermally stratified lake. Now when that warm water comes out, it's pushing its way out into very cold water. And because they have different densities, they don't mix. So, so when, that warm, when that warm water bumps into the cold water, they've either got to go up over the top or do this and go down. And that's what they do. Warm water and the cold water hit and then go like an escalator going going down into the ground into the Yeah and it sets up a gyre like this. So there so there is a gyre here doing this. Okay. That place between the warm water and the cold water is called the thermal bar. And it traps all the nutrient-rich runoff from the shore inside of it. And that's why this water looks greener here than it will out deep in the lake because we've got an algae bloom going in this near shore water. Our first exercise is to go out into the lake and try to find the thermal bar. And we'll do that by measuring temperature. It was 16 degrees at the dock. We're going to go out and try to find some cold water. And the way you find it is you look for this convection cell. You look for where those two convections are coming together. Now, how would you see that? You see that because when that water goes down, pollen, We'll see twigs, and we'll see whatever other detritus is out there. Now the scientific name for that place where all that stuff accumulates is the scum line. And it's a wonderful place to fish for steelhead in Lake Michigan because it collects, all the insects collect at that convection center. And the steelhead just come up underneath that and slurp up all the insects. So when we fish Lake Michigan, we go out, we find the scum line, and then we just throw surface baits in and out of the scum line. Because that convection cell goes like a hair curler way down, there's a whole line of this detritus. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out a ways, and then when we're out of distance, the captain's going to tell us to start looking for the scum line. Now, none of you are good enough at finding the scum line, and that includes me. You aren't going to be able to see the scum line until we're in the middle of it. So what else might you look for? Seagulls. So when we get out of way, start looking for seagulls. And when we, if we start to see some little clusters of seagulls feeding in the scum line, then we'll know to look over the side and look for color differences, and then we'll try to measure some temperature differences. largest lake, but it's telling you the story of a massive process that's going on that has a huge impact on the way this lake behaves. In there there's warmth and sunshine and algal growth and out here it's a cold desert. So there it is, there's the 
there's the evidence of the convergence right there. The two water masses are meeting, they're sinking, and that's the stuff that's left on the surface.